Hey, I'm Tyler Edlin, and for another episode of the Brush Sauce Theater, we're going to be critiquing and going over uh, some of my students' work and uh, helping them with their values. All right, to give you guys a bit of context of what we've uh, been working on, uh, the student kind of set up a bit of a premise, uh, got some some story context for his project, uh, and basically started mind mapping and listing out some parameters for it. We started building a reference and uh, style board to really set the mood and the tone of the work. So there's somewhat of uh, expectations uh, of, of the final outcome and kind of basically entry level art direction stuff that we begin to introduce, uh, or I introduce the students to early on. We've already had uh, the very first round of thumbnail sketches and they looked like this. Uh, I believe we talked about uh, creating a bit more of a stor uh, story context, uh, emphasizing certain aspects over others, and basically making things more dynamic and feel a bit more fresh. These are Overall, not bad, and again, I know it is a bit subjective. We just wanted to liven them up, make do something a little bit more memorable, and basically up the scale of things for his first uh, kind of setup shot for his story. It then made it to a second round of revisions, where with his story, it's actually a normal-sized village, and there's a giant that kind of lives in like a neighboring uh, kingdom or county and that has put up a giant wall and there's the gardens and overgrown vines and stuff so it's it, there's an opportunity here to play with scale so that's what we really uh, wanted to explore with these having a little kind of modest sized village or town outside of a, a gigantic wall where there's epic scale garden stuff so a massive massive world normal sized people in a, in a village on the outskirts of that. That's the setup. All right now, so we have some sketches. Uh, the, the student laid in uh, a quick value plan to kind of figure out, hey, what's gonna be in light? What's gonna be in shadow? How can we make that work with our, with our focal point? And uh, you know the flow and how the viewer's eye is gonna look and how can we prioritize things? So uh, overall, it's not a bad, it's not a bad uh, start, not not in any way. It's got some good bounce light, some good direct light. But you know, at this point, I like how much. I ask usually, how much reference have you got? Have you have you got any inspiration for your color palettes? Uh, what what sort of things are you looking at to kind of gauge your direction from here moving forward? This is a little bit different than uh, the, the the initial stuff we we, we looked at, uh, which kind of you know jump started us but at this point it's like if you're painting an, a scene now of this scale I, I mean I feel personally it's really good to look at you know artists that are doing it really really well it, it doesn't hurt you can you can gauge how much detail is in the background you can kind of gauge how much detail is in the foreground and of course what to emphasize from there how to imply certain things never hurts to get more reference I don't recommend now getting you know tons and tons of them just get a few really focus pieces that you know you personally feel could could benefit your uh, your particular image for and so i guess the the, the bulk of what i'm going to do here is to push that atmospheric perspective i'm going to toss a lot of light into the scene and i'm going to hopefully uh structure up the values in some of the forms i could fail i mean and yeah this is about one half. This video encompasses about one half of our of the students in my session. We we worked on these whole other other things, but before we even getting to this, so yeah, the the sessions go for uh, you know one and a half to two hours. I think all of this kind of made up about uh, about fifty fifty five minutes or so. And so um, yeah, with with backgrounds in particular, uh, I like to kind of start fixing the big shapes and see if we can get these big forms to read. And for that, I usually separate everything in the midground and the foreground, figure out where that background transition is, get those values to kind of smoothen up up there, lighten things up. And, and basically when my suggestion for him is like, 
and, and when we when I was talking with him, we we figured out yeah he's really kind of blocking in a lot of the solid shapes first, and that's good. But then I, I, I again introduced this um, kind of how I work. I, I don't even something I'm even that mindful of these days. It's just kind of how I develop. I was like try glazing in some atmosphere. And kind of how we can do that is go a little bit darker than we initially perceive. So you have areas that you can you can glaze light into the scene. You can you can brave people, or <laughs> you, you can color dodge it in. You can overlay it in. There, there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's there's not a right or wrong way by any means. But I, I like to work this way too. It it's a good way to kind of block out a foundation and kind of just put the light and you know by extension put that contrast where we need it. And generally speaking, I usually would advise uh, my students, like, if you can't make uh, a series of scenes or, you know, a handful of scenes consistently look good purely in value first, that probably is a strong indication um, not to, like, jump into color. Make your, make your scenes look really solid in, in terms of black and white, and if you can do that consistently, then, okay then take that next leap and, and start playing and experimenting and, and studying color. Uh, you can have a really nice image with value um, and without color, but uh, if you have a, an image with color and the values are messed up, you, know, you can have one without the other, is what I'm saying. But anyways, yeah, I, I decided to include this this week because I thought, uh, yeah, I've been really, really busy and it's been hard for me to produce some new original content in regards to lessons or, or topics. I am working on some stuff. I'm writing a few scripts. They should be out in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for them. But I thought at least, you know, to fill the day and maybe make a little bit of a YouTube's algorithms, you know, I can make that quote by getting this out for you guys. So you'll have to let me know if this is something anyone you... And anybody else finds uh, beneficial and uh, you know worthwhile is I can always do more of these to help fill the gaps between my more uh, you know having my guest artists and my more themed lessons so definitely get back to me on that and and so what we're doing here um, I'm trying to get get everything to read in terms of the shapes and the the forms big simple masses so I, I think it's often not the worst idea to approach these is almost an abstract uh, in an abstract way. I don't know where I was going with that, but you know, breaking, okay, the rocks are gonna be this shape, the trees will be this shape, the clouds will be this shape, you know, etc., etc. And then from there you can add detail. If you can get your scene to work, you know, in a really simple manner or fashion, and then then you know sprinkle in the details, add add all the fixings on top of that. And trust me, I love fixing it's as much as the next person. I mean, the shrubbery, the, the people, the, the little animals, the, the divots in the rocks, all those little things. But yeah, it's, it's like, okay, the, the houses are all going to be squares and triangles. You know, the trees are all kind of pine trees so, or you know, spruce, so they're all kind of just pointy little triangles. Uh, the rocks, the massive, massive epic boulders are, you know, they're, they're clumpy and round. They're, they're all boulderish. But yeah, everything has basically its own sort of language to it. Um, and that'll help, of course, with the readability. Really what we did from, you know, the real world reference that the student gathered, uh, the paintings that we gathered, and then, then again, some of that style information, we're, we're taking that information, we're breaking it down, we're organizing it in a way to make it, you know, a lot, a lot better for the viewer to read. Yeah, now I'm just trying to make all the transitions work. You know, it, it's really good early on to establish. Okay, this is going to be the, the 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 value of this object in the color. This is going to be the value of this object or surface in the shadow. So everything kind of has a two-note tone to it. There's a shadow value and a light value almost for everything in the scene. Now, there's some objects like these trees in the foreground and everything. They're entirely in shadow, and that's fine. I can kind of keep them like that. And from here, I'm going in and I'm working up uh, some of these forms and these mountainscapes in the background. See, I have the light just kind of kissing the top of those edges to kind of show that, yes, all the sides there are in shadow. And of course, when it, we have that all around that focal point, which is that the corner of that town up there, we have it nice and simple behind it. So it, it, it helps bring that, uh, that storytelling aspect 
uh, to the forefront. Now, at this point, I realize you know this is kind of getting the idea across. There is that one giant leaf uh, or or plant, or whatever we want to call it, in the background. But overall, we're not getting uh, that giant world type of effect yet. I think at this stage, we've kind of immensely helped that atmospheric perspective. You know, we took the sky and we just tossed it into all the other <laughs> elements of the painting uh, to make it, uh, you know, things a bit lighter, a little bit more airy. Um, but now I really got to work up, I think, getting some of these plants and stuff into the... Uh, into the rest of the scene to, to show that sense of scale. And, and it's selling that sense of scale that is probably one of the more challenging aspects of the student's particular piece. A lot of it is working up to this point, but yeah, we wanna, if we're gonna sell, you know, a little bit of that fantastical or you know, the fantasy aspect, yeah, that that is what's gonna make this particular setting unique to this, you know, the student and uh, the, the world and the story that they're telling. And generally, you know, I, we do these overpaints. I, I, we, we talk about things. Uh, I, I'll send them back the PSD. They can deconstruct it. Uh, they can apply it and basically try to, you know, retread the steps and, and you know, interpret and learn, you know, and, and build off of what I do and I build off what they do. And it's a collaborative aspect. You know, sometimes I think a lot of us artists overlook the collaborative aspect of things when we look at. Um, you know, AAA portfolio stuff, right? When we see the art of books, you know, art from the movies, art from the games, that's all done by teams. You know, there's always an artist's name on it, but they're they're always collaborating with their teammates. They're they're talking to art directors. There's there's a lot of input and feedback going into a single piece. And when we're you know, the small guys, we're just working at home on our desk. We have to art direct and call all the shots ourselves, unless we have a lot of lifelines of. A really high-grade artist that we can send our work to, and they'll give us their honest feedback. But you know that—that's why it's—it's it's always good to get uh, as many eyes as you can on a particular piece. It never hurts, and there's no shame in it. So here, what I'm doing is <laughs> lightly sketching out some of these massive vines coming out. I. At this point, like I can sketch them and kind of have it work for me, like in, in terms of this level. But definitely, if I personally were to take this to a color, if I were to take this to a finish, I'd go get lots. I'd have a whole little separate page for gardening reference. I love to garden, but it's like I, I haven't done enough of these these types of plants this up close and maybe this scale that I feel 100% confident with it. So you have to be honest with yourself in a lot of these situations. You know, do I understand what I'm drawing? If if it's no, take a step back, do some studies, figure things out. Otherwise, your your final piece will suffer from it. If you made it up, it'll look made up, trust me. It's kind of kind of like this meta game for us artists like how honest can we be with ourselves about how much we know about you know, subject A or subject B. But yeah, see, the, the garden is a total slop fest for me, but it, if this is my sketch or something, I know, like, okay, like, it's starting to spill over this wall, I can get the picture from that, and then I can just get some, I can get the proper reference and put it through the proper channels from there to kind of correct things out, get it sorted of sorts. But yeah, this is um basically there for our, for our session, and... Yeah, you'll have to. You, you, you can let me know in the comments. Feel free to subscribe, of course, if you want to see more of this. Um, you know, did, did we improve it, or you know, did we didn't, or did, have we celebrated what this student was looking to achieve? Thank you.